I was sitting behind you the night you saw the documentary for the very first time. So I was sort of distracted watching the screen and watching your reaction. What was it like for you to see sort of your life pass before your eyes? I thought that I, I would like to have done this all, done this all over again. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I, you know. You mean the uh, life? You wanted to live again, or you wanted to redo the doc? <laughs> yeah, I'd do the whole thing all all over again. I want to do this whole thing. All over. How would it have looked different? Well, I probably I probably would have put put more music into it and less uh, jawboning. I thought the uh, jawboning was pretty interesting, though. Did it make? And you I, would, I would have chosen for my more recent catalog because we had stuff available. We had some great stuff available that we just did. Uh, six or seven years ago that was hardly looked at at all. So I would like to have seen some of that. So what they do, what they usually do, they go right back to the beginning and, uh, and get the, the very first thing that ever happened, and, and there it was. Uh, a song which uh, uh, I lost faith in after about singing it for about 23, 24 years on stage. I finally said, I'm, I'm not going to sing this anymore. That's what because, you get for loving me? Because of what me. it says. Yeah, because of what it says. Tell me it's why a, that know. turned you off so much after so many years. Well, it was, it's an insult to, to women. Some people say you could turn that around and, and it could be the woman doing this song. I say, oh, that's right, so you could. Just think about it. The woman could be talking to the, the man, but with me, I'll, you know... But, you know, end of that story. It, it you were, you were that guy, though. So, you were that guy. You wrote yeah, I, you know, I, I was. And I, and I was married and, and had a, a couple of really young, young children, you know. And, uh, uh, I was married to a woman who was very, very philosophical. She was from uh, Stockholm, Sweden. And uh, she, she t took the thing. She, it didn't bother her. But it bothered you later. It did. Yes, it did. But it did later on. Did you ever sort of like the twelve-step program? Go back and say I'm sorry, or it was too late then for that. We, we had folded year, years before that. Things had folded year, years before that. And the relationship with the kids? That re that remained. That remained. Well, that's some good news then. Yeah, yeah. It was fascinating to me to hear you say, and I'm quoting you: "I hate that song." Oh. In the dock. Well, yeah, it, it's, uh, I, I guess, the, it, it, it's a very, I, I didn't know what, what, what chauvinism was. That's as close as I can get to it as a description. It, you just aren't, aren't supposed to, to, to put it into a song, uh, it, you know, it, it, being a, that early on in my career, I, I, would, I, I wouldn't think about it much. I wouldn't also think about what was going through my subconscious at the time. Very, very much. I would just say, "Hey, here's a song going," and and uh, the next thing you know, uh, somebody has a, a, a hit record with it, and there it is. Huge. Not myself, but but you know, number one, it, wasn't it? Didn't it become? Well, well, it, 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 I think they made it up. Peter Paul and Mary made it up, up to number five, and but, but before that, Peter, uh, Ian and Sylvia had a very nice recording of it as well. They were another group who were a duet. Uh, Ian and Sylvia who were there at the, at the dawn of the folk revival and uh, they had already done, they were the first ever to record any of my material. It was amazing and, uh, to so see Sylvia Tyson at the yeah, oh, at yeah, your oh, documentary. Oh, oh, absolutely. Over time though, doesn't that say yeah. something to oh, you? Yeah, over yeah, over history these people yeah, are still yeah, uh, dip into your life. Yeah, she, she's done very well. She's written a novel and done all kinds of things. I, I learned so much about your music, not just that song, but um, your inspiration for other songs that, that became global hits. You know, Sundown, for example. What was happening in your life at that time? Uh, by that time, I had, had, had moved on to a, a singular life again. <laughs> Meaning? By, meaning I'd, I'd, I'd gone through my, my first separation and, and divorce. And uh, I was, uh, uh, I, I actually be, was a bachelor for 19 years. But during that time, uh, uh, there, there were uh, some relationships. And I remember I, uh, my first one was with a, 
uh, a really good old friend of mine, of Kathy Smith. They, they were sort of they, they were sort of downtown. I was out in the country. We were living at that time in a house out in, in King, and I was writing, and I was getting ready to make an album and, I, and get ready to go on a canoe trip all all at once, writing the tunes and getting ready to go on a canoe trip. And Kathy was in town with her friends there, and they were, and they were hopping the bars. They were, they were bar hopping, and uh, you know, d down here in the in the city, down in the downtown. You know, <laughs> the, the girls all were downtown, and I, uh, I started thinking about feeling that little, that little pang of, well, you know, I wonder what they're up to, and that is how that song "Sundown" came to be, and it was just purely just uh, imagining. Falling, falling in favor with, with someone else other than myself while they were, you know, not that I would have any right to do so, but... Very sad news. We've lost another legend, that is Gordon Lightfoot, a man who was born on November 17th, that was in 1938, and he has died today on 1st May 2023. He was a Canadian singer, a songwriter, a guitarist, and of course a man with a very soothing voice he achieved international success in folk folk rock and of course country music regarded as one of those huge huge legends in the country music genre we've lost him today he actually has been always been credited with helping define the folk pop sound of the 1960s and 70s with his so many songs so we he, we've just lost him today and it's really very heartbreaking he has always been by the way referred to as canadia canadian the canadian's greatest song writer and he was internationally known as a folk rock legend lightfoot's biographer that is mr nicholas jennings said his name is synonymous with timeless songs about trains and shipwrecks rivers highways lovers and of course loneliness so the legendary canadian folk artist today has passed on and according to uh, Victoria Victoria Lord the representative for the family has come out to issue a very emotional touching and heartbreaking statement where he said that um, uh, the musician passed away peacefully at his home the cause of death has not been released yet in this moment in time but of course um, it's been I, I think it will be released as time goes on so uh, that's uh, what has been happening in this moment in time. So looking through the biography of the legend, that is um, uh, the legend Gordon, Light, Gordon Lightfoot, um, it's believed that um, he rose to fame in the 60s after he moved to Toronto, which opened doors in the thriving um, Yorkville music scene, and he hooked up with fellow folkies Ian and Sylvia Tyson. Uh, those, by the way, are one of the two also legends within the rock and actually the country, uh, the folk country general. They became great admirers of his works, and of course, they covered um, two of his tracks. Uh, the common one, I think, um, I think the debut album, Lightfoot, it was ushered in a new folk voice, and by the turn of the decade, he eased rather effortlessly into the pop scene, making his first appearance on the Billboard chart that was in 1971 with one of those huge, huge legendary songs if you could read my mind lightfoot's popularity peaked in the mid 1970s from around 1973 74 75 up to late 1978 uh, when both his singles and singles and album sundown topped the billboard and his first and only time doing so but his chart positions did little to slow him down of course um, in the final decades of his career when he built a reputation as one of the stalwart road musicians in spite of various health related issues the report 
um, uh, that has been released by the Canadian press, it's believed that um, looking through the discography of the legend that is Gordon Lightfoot, uh, his huge and best songs can include Early Morning Rain, the likes of Ribbon of Darkness, uh, by the way, it's one of the number one hit songs in the US uh, country chart with Martin Robbins, uh, actually you also covered it in 1965, Black Day in July, about the 1967 Detroit riot that brought him a wide recognition uh, he produced so many albums and he achieved gold and multi platinum status status internationally that's so not why he is regarded as one of those greatest artists by the way his records were also um recognized by so many other legendary artists the likes of elvis presley john cassin hank williams uh bob dylan and so many others so we send our deepest condolences to the family friends rest in power the king gordon lightfoot